it's like a fine tuning of what God has called us to, which is to love people with the love of, of Jesus. And so we want to talk, and I, I promised to everybody that I would keep it short. We want to love others by being real, R-E-A-L, and each one of those will mean something. People encounter Jesus all the time. They encounter Jesus every single day. It's just that Jesus looks like you. I'll let you soak. Just saying. Just saying. The people encounter Jesus all the time. It's just that Jesus looks like you. And when I say that, that's, there's no condemnation because most of the times we think, yeah, they wouldn't be seeing Jesus too much depending on my day that I had <laughs> and the stuff of life. But the re reality is people still encounter Jesus through your life and my life. And when we do things like the tent meetings we did in August and we do Harvest Fest, we have this wonderful opportunity to let people encounter Jesus through you and through me. And it's not like we have to put on our little halo because Jesus made us just the way we are. We don't have to tune up our halo. We don't have to get our pious looks. We just have to be who God made us to be. But nonetheless, it still becomes this amazing opportunity to let others who may not know him encounter Jesus out in the real world, out in the community, and to demonstrate that love. So, I thought we would just kind of do a tune-up before the big game. Some of you who have played sports know that if you have a game on, say, a Friday night, which I'll use the sport on, that Thursday is the, the final practice and you tune up, you usually don't wear, we, don't, we didn't wear pads. We would go through all our plays, go through our game plan. And so this is kind of like the game, pre-game tune-up that we're going through for next week. But let's read along together, because it's there, because I want everybody to say the words, and, and don't hit anybody next to you and say, he's talking about you. Because <laughs> he's talking about us all. Let's read together. Beloved, love is... Another, for love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. By this the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us, Send his son to be a propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Easier to read sometimes than to do. Amen? Just depending on the person. But one of the great things about going to church is we get to practice with people that are in the church that sometimes can be our greatest trainers. How's that? <laughs> Again, I'm not thinking about anybody here. I read it in charisma. You know, it's kind of like the pastor one time. There was a pastor in this church, and he got really, really sick. And one day he got a get well card, and he got this get well card from the head of the women's ministry. And, and the card had a note attached, and it said, the women's ministry voted to send you a get well card. The vote was 31 to 30. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so God calls us to love, and we're given that assignment, whatever that looks like on any given day. The word real, which is our key word, actually existing or happening. In other words, not fakey. Not fake, false, artificial, not imaginary, important and deserving to be regarded or treated in a serious way. We're called to love people real, 
Jesus said he was, it says in the scripture, he was full of grace and truth. He loved people real, just as they were. He sat, in fact, it says in the scripture, if I put it in my own term, he partied with sinners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sinners loved hanging out with Jesus because he loved them real, exactly who he was. So the first R in our word real has to do with relationship. We love people by being relational with them. Relational just means that we connect with them. There's a connection that happens. The people, because of the life that we live, because of the na nature of our life and culture, they can pick up fake stuff really easy. But when we love with the love of Jesus, there's a real a relational connection that happens. And of course, relationships normally develop over time, but they can sense when people really do love them or not. One of the things that happens most often is when people start to love, and again, we don't have to work it up. We don't have to be, oh, I gotta love them, I gotta love it. It just flows from who lives inside of us. That's right. And then from that flow, people sense that love. They pick up that love, and it's all about relationship. So even as we're working out in the Harvest Fest and we're playing a game or we're talking with someone, and some people can come and they can be challenging to work with, you know, we just love them and we just get connected with them. And they'll come away with a deposit of God that they had not mm -hmm. had before. Mm -hmm. Just because they met with God through you and through me. We don't have to make it happen on our own. That's the secret. Because if we say, come out of here and we say, oh, I got I to gotta get all my, you know, my love muscles ready to love people next week. That's not going to work. But if we just be ourselves and let the love of God flow through us, it becomes a very natural expression of who lives inside of us and who we are. It's simply saying, Jesus loved people through me. Larry Randolph, the prophet, says that whenever he begins to, he senses the love of God, automatically his gifts begin to activate. Because love activates the gifts. You know, the, one of the things that we say, uh, St. Francis, St. Patrick, one of the saints, St. Julio, I don't know which one. It says, <laughs> but he, one of them said, preach the gospel always, if necessary, use words. <laughs> you know, preach the gospel always, meaning give, tell people the good news that there's a God who loves them. But if necessary, we have to we use our words, but our actions, our modeling, our life, just preaches that good news all the time. E stands for go the extra mile. It speaks of being a servant to people. That the greatest expression of love oftentimes is just serving them, whatever that looks like, helping them in whatever way that looks. Little children don't love with word or with tongue, but in deed and in truth. There can be an awful lot of, of conversation, an awful lot of, of speaking about love, but the reality of love is love is a verb. It's an action word. And so when we love in deed and in truth, okay, that reflects the love of God. Now Jesus, before he went to the cross, which was the very greatest expression of his love, you know, he said, greater love has no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Mm -hmm. But just before that, at the Last Supper, he did a model of servanthood because he went around and he washed everybody's feet. He was the Son of God, the creator of the universe, the, the, the God of heaven and earth, going around like a slave, washing the feet of his disciples, even Judas, the one who betrayed him. How great is that love? And so he modeled servanthood. So when we're out there and we're... And we're we're playing games with kids, or we're helping on the hayride, or we're just directing people, or we're, we're policing in the maze here so that kids don't kill each other. <laughs> we're literally being Jesus in that setting. Next one, acceptance. I love this meme, by the way. I don't know if that real, anybody can relate to that. It's Kermit the Frog. <laughs> It's hard to read, I guess. It says, hello, may I speak, 
please speak with Jesus because these folks are going to make me break at least four of the Ten Commandments. <laughs> Don't give anybody a shot. <laughs> Don't say he's talking about you. <laughs> but it says that we accept people for who they are. The kingdom of God is not eating or drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. By this we are we serve Christ as acceptable to God and approved by men. So when we accept people for who they are, and I don't know about you, but there are secret judgments in my heart that I make perhaps all the time yeah. mm. about people. Mm. And one of the greatest examples, and I probably, I might choke up, was one of my guys who played football for me, who was this guy Steve. You've heard me tell the story before. Steve was about 275 pounds, and he was mentally challenged. And so he played football for me because he liked being around the guys, but liked being on the team. I could never put him on the field because he'd either kill himself or others. But he liked it, and we would have him hold the dummies, and he, he, would, he was part of the team. Mm -hmm. Well, after, the, after he, he left school, he would stop in. We had a bookstore here in the plaza back in the 80s. And he would stop in and he would see me and he would, he would say, how you doing, coach? <laughs> He'd stop in and we would talk. And he said to me one day, he came upstairs, he, he said, you know, coach, I got a girlfriend. <laughs> Steve, that's awesome. Where she live? Carol. <laughs> Carol, coach. He said, uh, you get along well? Oh, yeah, we get along well. Then he said this. He said, she got caught in a fire, coach, mm -hmm. so her face isn't much to look at, but she's got a beautiful heart. Oh. <laughs> out of the mouth of babes. Yeah. Out of the mouth of babes. You know, and I never forgot that, that unconditional acceptance mm -hmm. of who she was for who she was despite all of her challenges as well. The last one, of course, is love. And we just love people in whatever that love looks like. You know, and that love can be as simple as wiping the nose of a child. It can be a touch, a hug, a healing. Um, Mother Teresa, and I've, I've mentioned her so many times because she's one of my heroes. She said, I ministered to Jesus today he just looked like a dying beggar on the streets of Cal Calcutta. Mm -hmm. You know that as we minister for Jesus, as we minister to others, we are also ministering to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus just looks like the people we minister to. So not only do we look like Jesus to others, but we minister to others who look like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Even with all of their stuff, all of the things that have gone on in their life, you, you know, people have gone through some stuff in their life, and that stuff has made them who they are. But my Bible says that God still made them in His image, in His likeness, and they're not going to look like that when they get to heaven. Amen? They're just the stuff of life. Now, C.S. Lewis said this. He said, be weird. If somebody <laughs> talking about you, <laughs> be random, be who you are, because you never know who would love the person you hide. Mm. Mm. Just be who you are. Amen. Just be who you are, because there's there's Jesus in you, expressed through you, that makes it awesome and unique. Amen. Amen. I mean, sometimes you start to read about. There's a saying, and I'll, I'll end with this. There's a saying that says, that, uh, a saying that you read, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. We know that, and we're like, yeah, you ever try to live that one? But I saw kind of a different take on it, and it says this, what doesn't kill you gives a lot of unhealthy coping mechanisms and a really weird sense of humor. <laughs> and so... <laughs> And sometimes people go through life and they've learned how to cope and it looks different. But deep down inside, the seed of Jesus is still there. Amen? Amen. And especially if they've said yes to him.
They said, yes, Jesus, I want you in my life. You know, I'm, I'm tired of making this thing happen on my own. You know, I need someone greater than me to help me steer this ship and to take away those things in my life that aren't going so well and to work with me and to help me change and to take me into that place of identity and destiny that God has for you. There is a true identity in us that oftentimes is masked by the stuff of life that we've gone through. And there really is that identity that Jesus wants to open up, reveal like a flower in the spring, and make people just see who you really, really, really are made to be. So we're going to close in prayer. We're going to move some chairs. Um, I'd love to pray with you, even as we work. Um, but if we could stand, if you haven't ever said, Jesus, come into my life, I need you as my personal Savior and Lord, then come up. We'd love to pray with you. But I'd like to, before we close, if everybody could just kind of stand and pick a direction, north, south, east, west, turn and face that direction. We want to consecrate the, the plaza. There's been a number of prophetic words that as the plaza goes here in Ravina, so goes the whole community. So just kind of turn, whichever way you feel to turn. Father, right now, we pray that the power of the living God would rest on this plaza. That next week, God, we would showcase who you are. That we would showcase your love. That we would showcase your goodness. That we would showcase, God, that you don't put junk on people's lives. That there is an evil one. That he wants to kill, steal, and destroy. But you came to give life and give it more abundantly. Lord, I pray for each one, Lord, who would volunteer, that, God, we would showcase Jesus just by being who we are in grace and love and truth to the others that would come. Lord, let every detail fall into place. But right now, Lord, encompass this plaza with your angelic host. Lord, set up walls of fire and hedges of protection around it. Lord, and just let people come and be blessed in Jesus' name, and let each one here, God, just reflect Jesus to the world. We thank you in thy name. Amen. 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 So, if you'd like prayer, we'd love to pray for you. Um, Alyssa, you're going to direct, I guess the, the chairs are going to be stacked over in the corner. Yep.